Hello guys, we are going to uh, start off with a brand new chapter where we are going to continue with chemical equilibria. So let's have a look of what we are learned, going to learn in this chapter. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about re reversible equilibria and derivation of equilibrium constant Kc and Kp. We are going also to study about the factors affecting chemical equilibria in the chapter principles. And finally, we are going to have a look at the effect of temperature towards chemical equilibria. So let's have a look at the reversible equilibria and derivation of the equilibrium constants. Now, for example, dissociation of dinitrogen tetraoxide gas N2O4 to nitrogen dioxide gas NO2 is a reversible equation, which can be described as in the equation below. So N2O4 gives to NO2. So N2O4 is actually a colorless gas, while NO2 is actually a brown gas. So from the reaction above, there shall be a time after the reaction where concentration of both reactant products will remain constant. So does it mean that the reaction has stopped? Although the concentration of both reactant and product remain constant, but this, the reaction is still ongoing. So this is also known as dynamic reactions. So for example, if N2O4 were to become NO2, from the angle of the equation shown just now, the, for, the reaction is what we call as a forward reaction in a reversible reaction. So as time passes by, concentration of N2O4 will decrease, while concentration of NO2 will decrease. In other words, you see more brown color intensity at the end of the day. Then, there is also another reaction which we call as a backward reaction. So, from a reversible angle, the reaction goes backward. So, you have 2NO2 to become N2O4. So, what will happen to the concentration of NO2 at the end of the day is the concentration of NO2 will decrease, whereas concentration of N2O4 will increase. So, what we observe in here is brown color intensity will decrease. So, uh, eventually, uh, all of them, eventually you see that, will remain constant at certain times. So what does it indicate when the concentration of N2O4 and NO2 remain constant after some times? So, um, in the reversible reactions, reactions occur on either a forward or backward reactions, therefore only one step. So we consider the reaction above, so N2O4 to become 2NO2. So using the equation above, rate equation for the forward and backward reaction can be written below, where rate of a forward reaction is written as rate is equal to K N2O4 whereas rate of the backward reaction is written as K minus 1 NO2 squared. So based on the understanding of dynamic concept, a chemical reaction is to say had achieved what we call as a dynamic equilibrium when the following circumstance take place. The rate of forward and backward reaction is the same, whereas the concentration of reactant and product remain constant while the reaction is still ongoing. So this is how we define as a dynamic equilibrium. So when we say that the rate of forward and backward reaction is the same, so rearranging the equation, we have K is equal to N2O4, uh, KN2O4 is equal to K minus 1 and O2 squared. So rate constant will not change with concentration, so we have to rearrange the rate constants together. So you have K over K minus 1, which is equal to NO2 squared over N2O4. So since constants over constants is actually another new constant, so new constants here is called as Kc, where Kc is NO2 squared over N2O4. So Kc is also known as equilibrium constant of concentration, which is a numerator which obtained by multiplying together the equilibrium concentration of the product, each raised to the power equals to stoichiometrical equation, divided by the concentration of the reactant, each raised so the power equivalent, uh, equivalent to the stoichiometric coefficient. So in the back or simply, Kc is equal to product power of y over reactant power of x. So in a homogeneous equilibria, so a homogeneous equilibria is where all reactant and product have the same state of matter. For example, if you have Pa plus Qb give Rc plus Sd, Kc of the reactions can be expressed as concentration of C power of R multiplied with concentration of D power of S over concentration of A power of P times concentration of B power of Q. A few examples of uh, that we can show on how to uh, derive Kc are shown below. For example, if you have 2 Fe3 plus plus 2i minus give to Fe2 plus plus i2, so Kc is equals to Fe2 plus square times i2 over Fe3 plus square times i minus, I minus square. Another example is N2O5 gave 4 NO2 plus O2, so Kc can be expressed as NO2 power 4 times O2 over N2O5 squared. 
For the reaction, we have phosphorus pentatrichloride, right? We add with ammonia to give hydrogen chloride and also diamine phosphide. So you can have Kc is equals to HCl cube time PNH3 two over NH3 cube time PCl3. And finally, 3NO give N2O plus NO2. So the Kc can be expressed as N2O times NO over NO3. Now in here, for the unit of the Kc, the unit of the Kc varies, uh, varies with the numerator of the product over the reactants. So in here, for example, since you have the overall concentrations is power of 3, and the overall power in here is power of 4, so therefore the unit of this Kc is small minus 1 dm cube. Total numerator of the Kc for the product in here is 5, and here is 2, so you have mole cube dm minus 9. And if you have the same concentration where this is 4 and this is 4, so this state Kc has no unit. And finally, for this Kc, the concentration of 2, like concentration of 3, so your unit is also mole minus 1 dm. So these are how we derive Kc from the chemical reactions and how to determine the unit of the equilibrium constant. So as you can see, the unit of the equilibrium constant largely depends on the numerator of the product over the reactants. Other than Kc, there is also another type of equilibrium constant called as an equilibrium constant of partial pressure, Kp. So Kp is measured by the factor of the partial pressure, where for example, in the Haber process, we have N2 plus 3H2 give to NH3. So equilibrium constant of a concentration Kc is equal to NH3 squared times N2 over N2 times H2 cubed. So when we express Kp, it will be more or less the same, it's just that we have to substitute by partial pressure. So partial pressure of NH3 squared over partial pressure of N2 times partial pressure of H2 cube. The partial pressure of ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen respectively. So similar to the uh, Kc, the unit of the Kp also varies. And in here, Kp can be measured in either atmosphere or pascal. A few more examples that shows the expression of Kp is shown in the table below. So for example, if you have 2SO2 plus O2 give to SO3, so Kp is expressed as partial pressure of SO3 squared over partial pressure of SO2 squared times O2. If 2HI give H2 plus I2, so Kp is equal to partial pressure of H2 times partial pressure of I2 over partial pressure of HI squared. If you have PCL5 dissociate to become PCL3 plus PCL2, so Kp is expressed as partial pressure of PCL3 times partial pressure of PCL2 over partial pressure of PCL5. And finally, if you have ammonia, react with oxygen to give nitrogen monoxide and also water vapor. So you have Kp is equal to partial pressure of nitrogen monoxide out of 4 times partial pressure of the water vapor times 6 over partial pressure of ammonia power of 4 times partial pressure of oxygen power of 5. So the unit of the Kp also varies in here. So for example, let's say let's assume that our unit of the pressure is atmosphere here. So if you have square over cube, so you have the unit of Kp is ATM minus 1. In here, if you have numerator 2 to 2, and then here you have no unit. In here, if you have 2 and 1, so the unit of the Kp is atmosphere. And you have 10 over 9, the unit is also atmosphere. So this is how we express Kp for the reactions. So with that, that is all for the first part of the video, so we'll continue on later. Thank you.